The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time Friday morning. Hope everyone's had a good morning to kick things off. And markets right now, pretty calm territory. We kick things off with an S&P that's trading right at 4,300. 4,301, we'll call it on the charts right now. Up two points on the session. That's a five-minute chart. You see the action. Even last night, 3 in the morning, down about 4,286, all things considered. We'll jump over to the VIX, right? Very little volatility in this market. Not sure today is going to be any different. NASDAQ 100 up by 42 right now. You have the Dow negative by 62 points in the Russell off by two points right now. Crude trading near $71. There was some volatility for you yesterday, man. Crude drives down to 69. We finished the session at about 71.50. That's where we were just a few minutes ago, 71.50. Right now we're off that price a bit at 71.02. Gold contracts had some volatility recently, especially with the dollar index moving. We got gold this morning. You see the volatility again. Up to 1988, just like that. We give it up again at 1977 right now. We jumped in notes and bonds. You got a little bit of lower price, higher yields. Down to 112.30 early yesterday. And again, right near the open. Right now, we're at 113.16. You're technically negative by seven ticks on the session right now on the 10-year. And you got to jump over to the VIX, volatility index. 1366, made it to 1353 yesterday. Do we see a 12 handle on the VIX today? It's possible, man. Seems like it's on a one-way trip. You take a look at this thing, even put it on an hourly, right? Talk about an acceleration, man. Just over two weeks ago, 2081. And remember, folks, that was the day that NVIDIA really started blowing out of the water, okay? In terms of when this market really started taking off, right? You back things up. It was Wednesday, May 24th. Let's go back to the VIX. Yeah, there it is, Wednesday, May 24th. So we spiked into those NVIDIA earnings. NVIDIA came out, forecasted they're going for $11 billion in the upcoming quarter versus $7 billion. And that has been a catalyst with some other things thrown in there in terms of the Fed indicating that they're probably going to be pausing slash skipping. I really think that's a, that's a high probability that's going to happen, folks, on Wednesday coming up. We get CPI data on Tuesday coming up as well. So some interesting data points, at least one interesting data point right before the Fed. That's right as they start their meeting. And they'd probably get an indication of that, at least the chairman the night before, in terms of what they'll be dealing with for a CPI number like that. But nonetheless, VIX trading at 1365. And we've got to jump over to the dollar index, as I mentioned, with gold, the volatility yesterday, dollar index right now. Up 10 basis, up 10 ticks at 103.44. You can see right near the lower boundary line of where we've been recently. You were up to almost 104.70, back things up about a week ago. You put this back on a daily, and you can see that, yeah, we've bounced a bit, but the lower range in the dollar, you're talking about 101.20 if you make it back there. And boy, if you ever catch a bit again and things change, I mean, things are almost as rosy as they could be for a weak dollar right now in terms of the optimism of a Fed cutting. And we'll go from there. It speaks for itself. Uh, so with that, let's go to the Fed. We'll kick things off with the Fed story. Why not? Because it's going to be in focus next week, man. The Fed is seen ending its 15-month hiking campaign in economist survey. Folks, I would just go to the vice chairman uh, nominee's Jefferson, his, his comments, and I'll pull them up maybe throughout the show again. You couldn't have been more clear. He left himself no room. They were prepared remarks. He's going to be the vice chairman. You wouldn't come out and be that strong about pausing, skipping, letting the data play out and then potentially coming back with another hike if they needed to if things were up in the air it's very easy to say that things are up in the air if you really thought things were up in the air you would leave yourself the room to be up in the air hear those words man when they're prepared remarks and they're coming from the vice chair nominee boy they matter and i think people are listening and i'm almost surprised to see this happening because i see it as a surety man that it's happening i think the market already sees it as a surety as well the fomc is to upgrade the view of growth this year with less joblessness is how Bloomberg puts it here, shrinking the balance sheet even after the eventual rate cuts. 
Economists see a pause in June and cuts starting in 2024. That's the much more interesting conversation, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't know for it. The, 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 the crazy part about this is, I mean, that's where you're looking. OK, you're looking that they they pause, they stay where we are. And then maybe you get into the beginning of next year and we start cutting potentially. But boy, that seems like a rosy situation, man. It's only 46 people telling you what they think. And guess what? Nobody really knows right now what's going on. It's all opinions. Uh, I was listening to Bloomberg early in the morning, just before I came on the air, even. And they had Muhammad al Aryan. And he was saying, nobody really knows what happens in the next six, 12 months, man. Nobody. Everybody's got an opinion. But this is uncharted territory. We are dealing with generational inflation. I'm adding some thoughts. But the next six, 12 months, man, nobody knows what's going to happen. Okay? Everybody's got an opinion. But we've seen how opinions have been radically wrong. And I think it's interesting how many people are lined up on where we're going to be in terms of rates, cuts, and the peak rate. And meanwhile... The hard part hasn't even come, folks. The hard part's probably when you get to like 3.5% inflation. When you get to 3.2% inflation, now the Fed's going to ease up if they think they're on the way. But boy, are we going to be stuck at 3.2? Are we going to be stuck at 3.4? Are we going to be stuck at 3.6 inflation? Folks, over, over three years, the 3.6 inflation rate is 10% over three years. Three years is nothing, right? So you see that that's supposed to be the hard part. We're not at the hard part. We're at the part between 4 and 5% inflation where things should be with a 15-month hiking cycle pairing a bit. So I find it hard to believe that we've been hiking for 15 months. I mean, think how well the housing market has held up, right? Think about that. If you had said the Fed is going to hike for 15 straight months, 10 straight meetings, mortgage rates are going to be at 7%. What are housing prices going to do? You wouldn't say they're where they are. You say, where, where are home builder stocks going to be? You wouldn't say they're where they're going to be. The resilience in this economy has carried over to inflation. So very difficult for me to imagine that there's all this lag that's going to catch up and magically squash inflation from almost an uptick now between four and five to two. Remember, they got to get to two. I mean, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle that we've somehow began talking about a pause and a skip when we're between four and five. But then, nonetheless, that's where we are. We know how it goes, man. And we get to find out on Wednesday, no matter what happens, he's going to have some explaining to do. As I think I was talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat, maybe I was saying that on Wednesday. And boy, no matter what he does, right? If you pause, boy, I better hear why you're pausing. And are you coming back with hikes? He's definitely going to give himself room to come back with hikes. You have to when inflation's pushing almost 5% core PCE. But if he doesn't hike, what's he going to say? And I, um, and I imagine he is not going to hike, and he's going to say pretty much what Jefferson said, which is they are going to be in lockstep. There's no harm in pausing for a meeting and seeing where we are six weeks, a meeting or two down the line. There should be a risk assessed into the market, though, that a, a pause or a skip Let's put it this way. A skip is much more risky, is much less risky. I'll sum it up again. If they just skip one meeting, that's not as risky because they can keep hiking. But if they're thinking about pausing, there's substantial risk that inflation picks up again. So we'll see what they say in that statement on Wednesday. Stay tuned, folks. We'll come right back. We have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get S&P's up by four right now. NASDAQ 100 up by 50. We jump over to Netflix shares. There's a bid for you, folks, and this thing is quite a trip. You're going to open up $15, and that is going to be because they're signing people up, man, because they clamped down on the passwords, as we all expected. We talked about it. Boy, if you got that warning, man, we should have bought Netflix on that. Now, you back this thing up, okay? That was the acceleration Friday. Yeah, and we came back Tuesday, and this thing opened at 400, traded to 390. You're at 426 right now. And that's after trading from 356 when this started happening, or the news at least was that it was coming out. Let me back it up even a little bit further. Yeah, that was the Friday I'm talking about there, where you accelerated from 360, let alone the 330 acceleration, okay? That was news-driven in some accord, I'm sure. But that... Friday news on May 26th, folks, was the news that they were clamping down on passwords. They did it over the long weekend. We came back on Tuesday, and this thing was up at three, no, 400, yeah, from trading at 360 on Friday. And just like that, though, you're going to open at 426. And the news is, yeah, that's, they're signing people up, man. They amassed more new subscriptions in the, in the U.S. between May 25th and 28th uh, and more than 100 countries than any other four-day period since they began compiling such data in 2019. And that's a streaming analytics company, Antenna. Now, I would make the case that, to use the word of the, the moment, uh, there's considerable lag in how it's going to take these users, man. I'm actually surprised that it happened on that very day, right? That was Memorial Weekend. Is that right? May 28th, Memorial Day weekend? I think it was. Yeah, May 29th was Memorial Day weekend. So they're saying they signed people, more people up leading up until, yeah, the 29th. So they're saying from Thursday to Sunday, 25th to 28th. Well, I'll tell you, folks, I think it was on that Sunday that I was over at my dad's house watching some Netflix, maybe, and it pulled up, or maybe I pulled it up the next day, or I pulled it up sometime over that time. I pulled it up that weekend and saw it. Maybe it was that Saturday night. But most of the time, what's remarkable is the person who's paying for it, okay, to really digest this, because there is some lag here, for sure. Because the person who's paying for the plan 
they don't have to do anything. All you have to do is you have to tell them, this is my home streaming network. Identify this location as my home streaming network. That way you don't have to constantly hit me up probably to confirm my identity. Everybody else that's not paying has that happen. So I guess you make the case that, yeah, the people that were freeloading there, the moment that they weren't allowed in, they went and they signed up by themselves. Now, where there's considerable lag, though, is that if you're use it, letting somebody else use your subscription, you can add those people. And that's where there's probably going to be considerable lag versus the people that say, OK, I've been freeloading off of my relatives or friends for long enough. I guess it's time to whip out the credit card and pay for it myself. Uh, but, yeah, interesting that it goes that day. Look at that. Look at the pandemic spike, right? Of course. Uh, daily U.S. signups, seven-day rolling average. Pretty remarkable. You, you get it done over, over the pandemic spikes when, when that was happening. Well, look at it. Mean, it's pretty remarkable how many they're adding constantly, right? 30, 40, 50, 60,000 people on a daily average, just like that. I'm sure they have some churn in there, which is why those numbers are high as well, though. Yeah, nonetheless, so they're going to pop $15 at the open man to 426 and I imagine that's not done because there's going to be a considerable period outside of that four-day period. So we're going to open at 426 You see the run from 701 down to 162 and boy, it don't stop, right? With the S&Ps up by six points, let's jump over to another poster boy for the decline uh, of, of quite the decline. You got Meta. Now, Meta's all the way back to the 618 of its demise. You go from 384 to 88 bucks. Interesting, right? Because you take a look at Netflix. Netflix, not even with this pop, but they're going to be back to 50% of the run they'd have. So Meta really clawing it back. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla breaking out potentially of its channel line. And you're going to get a bid today as well. They're trading higher on some news. I got a story pulled up for them as they get a pact with GM, I believe it is. Let's see. Let me find. No, potentially. Come on. All right, I'll have to find that article as well. Oh, no, I just had it. Clicked away. Here it is. Uh, Tesla, there's their news of the day. Climbs on a GM pact. Uh, and, yeah, Netflix as well. You talk about it. Uh, Tesla, though, they announced, GM announced it's joining the company's charging network. So GM is going to be making a deal with Tesla when you figure it out that they're going to be joining their charging network. Now, one of the big things Netflix, uh, Tesla, jumping around in all these companies, consistently talks about is that, you know, the infrastructure they build out, the battery power that they have, et cetera. Uh, my dad sent me an article a couple weeks back, I remember I was reading, just talking about the raw number of tax credits that Tesla gets dwarfs anything else compared to these companies because of basically the build out that they've had for whether it's the battery um, production that they do in America versus they have China as well for the credits though you're talking about what they've done in America the build out the infrastructure that they have as EV takes off and you're seeing it play out with GM uh, joining their network you jump over to GM shares they're higher on that pact as well trading up to 37.33 we jump over to the VIX this morning again 13.64 we got to keep track of how the dollar index is doing chopping around 103.42 Jump over to the 10 year, 10 year at 113.15. Let's see how NVIDIA is trading this morning. NVIDIA up about five bucks. You got growth stocks trading higher with the NASDAQ up about 56. We jump over to some of the other FANG stocks. Google shares, it was quite a sell off on Wednesday, man, across the board. Google shares going to be up marginally on the open. You have Amazon shares going to be down marginally on the open. I don't imagine any huge moves today. Be interesting with some some news on a few equities. You're going to have Netflix higher. You're going to have Tesla higher. Those are the two magnificent seven, man. It seems like it's always happening. We haven't jumped to Microsoft yet. Microsoft trading basically flat down about 30 pennies right now for Microsoft shares. All right, what else we got going on? Let's talk a little bit of crypto. You got Bitcoin this morning sitting at about 27,000. This one should not surprise you, folks. Um, Binance said its banking partners would pause. And I don't imagine that's going to be a skip. That's going to be a pause, man. It's going to be an indefinite pause. Their relationship with the exchange as soon as next week. Uh, yeah. Immediate scrutiny, as you'd expect, man, when the SEC is filing their charges against Binance. My dad was talking about it yesterday, right? They're going to have some trouble serving him. Uh, it's pretty amazing in terms of tech billionaires these days, especially in the crypto realm, that 
you don't need to have a headquarters. You don't need to have a headquarters at all. One of the things that Binance actually does is they don't have a headquarters and he is somewhere in the world and everything they do is electronic and what's the point of being anywhere, man? Why, why not be nowhere, never be found, use your money? So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because they're not going to be able to serve him, I imagine, and I'm sure the court will get around that in some capacity. But yeah, you're going to see relationships ever, man. Binance in particular. Coinbase is going to be a different deal, okay? Still wouldn't touch it. Amazing that this thing is back to, I mean, imagine, folks. This thing is back to where it was on Monday before the world knew that the SEC was coming after Coinbase. Now, you could make the educated guess that they were coming after him for sure, okay? But nonetheless, a pretty remarkable recovery at 55 bucks. That's where you were trading at two weeks ago. $56 and change. Meanwhile, they got an SEC lawsuit on their hands right now. We're coming back for the open, folks. Don't go away. We'll be back in three minutes. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF nn.com Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. you got an S&P climbing above the highs of the week right now. You catch a bid up 11 points at 4308 NASDAQ 100. You're up by 78 points. Let's jump over and see, man. Netflix sells off a bit on the open, up by 3.3%. You jump over to GM. On the Tesla news, up by 5.4%. You jump over to Tesla. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tesla up 5.5%. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks. 
Apple shares up seven tenths percent. Look at this, man. Apple making a run. We were just at 178 yesterday. We touched 182 right now. Sixty billion dollars added in market cap from yesterday. These tech companies, man. Microsoft barely in the green. Uh, Microsoft flat right now. Alphabet shares basically flat as well. Yeah, let's jump around to some of those banks, man. J.P. Morgan down about three tenths percent right now. Bank of America down about two tenths percent. Jumped some airlines. JetBlue. So check this one out, right? You want to talk about building a base. I mean, maybe that's where it is, right? I was looking at this thing. You talk about a weekly. Now, where is that line that I'm looking at here? You know where that line is, folks? At the COVID lows, right? Remarkable, man. Just uh, learning so much being in the markets in the last three or four years. Did you ever think, folks, when this thing got back up to 2196, you got above where we were pre-COVID, that in less than two years, you would be back at COVID lows when travel wasn't existing. So many remarkables. But guess what, man? Maybe that's a little bit of an acceleration. You got JetBlue up by nine tenths percent right now. You put things back on even a daily, uh, excuse me, an hourly, and you can see the acceleration we had this week from seven bucks up to seven fifty right now. But be careful, man. You know, you still got a floor in this equity about a what eighty, about ten percent below where it's trading at right now. Yeah. We jump over to GameStop uh, with their news that Cohen's becoming the chairman. Twenty-nine bucks was the spike. We're trading at twenty-one eighty-nine, and I imagine that's a slow crawl to much lower prices. You got to back it up. Amazing. You got to back it up that far now. Yeah, beginning of two thousand twenty-one. Look at this. You got ninety-four pennies on this on this chart in two thousand twenty, folks. Okay, you're still trading at twenty-one dollars on GameStop. Remarkable. All right, let's see what else. Yeah, we talked about Netflix. We talked about the Fed. I mean, it's a little bit light on news today as we jump around. We got a lot of hot takes, of course, with the Fed coming up next week. You have CPI data coming up on Tuesday. And boy, taking a look at this market. I mean, you talk about strength, man. You got 4327 hanging out there. My dad's been talking about on the spy. I believe it was on the spy. 431. Where are we looking? Are we looking at this one? Yeah, he's probably talking about that that high. 431. We're trading right now at 430.13 on the SPY. That seems like you should peg that number, right, for considering how far we've come. You're going to hear a lot of bull, bull market talk this weekend as well, and I imagine that's not going to go anywhere, man. Very little impetus for this market to trade lower as we come into the first Fed pause, high, uh, pause skip in 15 months. Now, I'll give you the flip side of that, okay? Because it's important to look at both sides, folks. The flip side of that is that we just had the NASDAQ 100. What, what do people say, folks? They say the market's forward-looking by three to six months, right? Something like that. Well, we just had the NASDAQ 100 trade up 3,500 points, which is over 30%. Is that right? Yeah, we're pushing over 30%, I think, now. On 11,000? Yeah, you're talking about an over 30% acceleration, okay? And that doesn't even sum up the stocks that are carrying this thing, though. Because I've talked about before, you got Apple adding almost a trillion dollars in market cap. You have Microsoft adding $800 billion in market cap. You have NVIDIA taking over the world when it comes to AI. You have Tesla resurging higher. I mean, Tesla kicked off the year at 120. You're trading at 246. Meta kicked off the year at 120. You're trading at 262, right? Mammoth numbers. A lot of optimism is built in, folks, okay? And especially we've had a, a nice combination of recent events in terms of the AI craze taking over right as the Fed begins to pause. But be careful because, and you don't have to go back that far, man, okay? I'm going to pull up the S&P, and really, that's a three-year. Let's go back for a three-year weekly, you know? When the Fed began hiking, okay, you had the market trade from 4,800 down to 4,200 in about the three months preceding that, two and a half months to be exact. And then you had the market actually pop almost 10% following their first hike. Many times you come into that number. We've now traded from a price point of 38.33. And in about the last two and a half months, 
the market has climbed almost 500 points from where we were trading at. It's about a 15, point, 15 percentage point acceleration, and this is the S&P, it's not even the NASDAQ 100. Okay, and that's not cherry picking some low, that's just picking the low that we accelerated from in the middle of March, about two and a half months, similar time frame to the Fed, right? Very difficult to imagine this market goes up forever. We do have a couple highs that can go after though, right? You're at 43.27 in the S&P, 4,600 seems like the next logical spot, and then boy, you're going for all time highs at 4,808. Would be remarkable, but boy, we got a lot of remarkable stuff going on in this market across the board. Let's take a look at the dollar index. Take a look at the dollar index, a little bit longer term. Dollar index up to 115 almost, you're back to under 102. We're sitting at 103.40 on the dollar index, 50% pullback on the dollar index. You take a look at the 10-year, a little bit of a different story as we are just chopping around near basically the lower price, higher yield portion of this curve, which is remarkable when you look at the dollar index, right? And that's the thing that doesn't quite match up in terms of you could make the case that the dollar index spiked to 115 when we were the only game in town. We were hiking. The Fed is now nearing the end of their hiking cycle, so things are going to change. We're not going to be the only game in town. Our interest rates are going to decline. Therefore, there's going to be less need or want or demand for dollars, resulting in the pullback to 102. And you could make that case because the market was probably anticipating maybe inflation would come down a little bit quicker than it did. Maybe we'd get a pause or a skip before the June meeting. But what's remarkable is you get that entire pullback in the dollar, okay? And you're back at levels that we were at almost when they began hiking, right? We're back to where we were in April of last year in terms of where the dollar is. Meanwhile, yield's not even close, man, okay? Yields, you got the 10-year. Yeah, you got pretty quick, I guess. But the 10-year's still about seven points lower than where we were at. And as you can see, let's put this... Yeah, for a similar time frame. But as you can see, man, we're chopping around, right? You got lows at 108. But meanwhile, we're back at prices you were at in September, and we're not even close to where you were in April, which was a price of about 120 in the 10 year. So something needs to catch up there with yields and the dollar. But I don't imagine it's going to happen today, man, because markets are euphoric. And we are coming into a meeting that can't stress it enough, man, that they are probably going to pause. And you're going to hear some, some strong wording, I imagine, from the chairman because there's nothing else he can really do in light of you inf inflation between four and five percent and they are not going to hike this meeting so you better believe he's going to try and tell the world that if things don't go the way they think they're going to go that yes they'll come back and hike i can't wait to see how the market reacts when he does that not really sure stay tuned folks we'll be coming back one more segment uh two more segments excuse me we'll talk about some of the other equities coming up next week as well we have exciting news, Tigers. This June, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle will be hosting two webinars, providing insight into his renowned market timing methodologies. On June 8th, Tim will delve into the S&P 500, teaching sentiment indicators, identifying market bottoms and divergence, and so much more. On June 15th, Tim pivots to the gold market, taking a look at cycle analysis, ratio studies, advanced decline indicators, and other important tools for analyzing this sector. Sign up today on TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. 
Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got markets pushing higher. S&P right now up 16 points, trading at 43.14. NASDAQ 100 right now up by 116, trading 14,620, man. Uh, we're within a stone's throw of the entire move that we got on Wednesday, man. You talk about some volatility, right? You're talking about 400 points down, 400 points up. That's about a 2.5% move. I told you, almost a 3% move from where this index, the NASDAQ 100, was 14,675. You make it to a low Wednesday evening slash Thursday morning of 14,276. Yeah, 400 points is where you moved and you almost got it all back just like that, man. Remarkable. Let's jump over. Yeah, Tesla up 5.5%. Netflix shares up 2.3%. They give back a huge chunk of that move. I think people already knew that was happening, man. Uh, Meta shares down about four tenths percent. Microsoft shares up eight tenths percent. There you go. We haven't looked at Amazon yet. Amazon up a full percent. Jumping around to some other growth stocks. Uber shares up by half a percent. And yeah, you want to talk about some big returns, man. Anybody that plowed into tech, they are doing well. And Tiger, another Tiger. Tiger Global among the hedge funds riding the AI mania to May gains. They're up 15.5 in the first five months. Doesn't seem remarkable, but boy, you look where they are, and it was quite a month. Microsoft and Meta were Tiger Global's top two holdings at the end of the first quarter, along with Tesla, Amazon, no, excuse me, those stocks, along with, of course, the other ones, are the ones that eked out some gains. Um, but nonetheless, May numbers, yeah, some pretty stark numbers, depending on where you were. As we know, it's all about those FANG stocks, man. We'll talk a little bit of Manhattan now, okay? Now, first we'll talk about, now first we gotta talk about the cost, man, because this is crazy. We're, I'm biased living in Florida, of course, but I come from the not Northeast, come from Massachusetts, come from Taxachusetts, and folks, it's a bummer it gets so political because there are tremendous benefits to some of the taxes that do get paid in Massachusetts. There's wasteful stuff everywhere, um, and blanket statements are not appropriate, okay? And they don't encompass everything. But my perception with children as well and looking around in Florida, and this is not representative of just taxes, okay? But the school system, unfortunately, in Florida, folks, is nowhere near where it is in Massachusetts. And so there are things that matter. But, boy, you talk about some numbers as well, man. I like paying no state income taxes. Don't get me wrong. And, boy, you look at some of the numbers, okay? Now, this talks about you could – and you gotta love the tantalizing headline, right? Two hundred grand. Well, if you make six hundred and fifty grand, 
that is an obscene amount of money still 200 grand if you're making 650 grand and that is the difference they do they put you at when you combine the taxes and the cost of living and the taxes are about 10 percent is what the difference is man and they go down the line even somebody making okay and i would argue that it's a much bigger deal for the person making 150 that they save 48,000 than it is the person making 650 saves 200 right now 650 in manhattan is basically going to be like 850 in miami is what they're saying which is a pretty large yearly income okay but the person making 150 and Manhattan is probably barely surviving at 150,000, man. They look at the costs that go into that, okay? Costs are 138% higher in Manhattan than the US average. In Miami, they're still higher, but only 23% higher than the average. And when you combine that with the no state taxes, okay? And when you talk about the higher echelon, 650,000 a year, you're talking about effective rate of 45% in New York. That drops to 35 in Miami by the lack of state income taxes. Now, they go over various different ones, okay? Chicago, not really a big difference, man. You see how things really differentiate from big cities. And this is going to matter when everybody can move. So if you didn't get a chance to read this article on Bloomberg, check it out. Because it's pretty stark how things combine and the differences. And you even look at San Francisco, right? New York's the starkest because of Manhattan and where it is. Now, we jump from there, okay? Good luck getting an apartment in Manhattan because it's so expensive and everybody wants to live there. Rents reach a third straight monthly record with more pain to come as the market enters its most competitive season. I mean, it's just so cool how things are going to play out here in terms of over – uh, 5, 10, 20 years, and time goes quickly, man, and, and real differences are shaping our lifestyles, which are shaping where people can live, and when you have a stark difference like this in terms of the cost, and folks, one of the first reasons, and I'm going back to about 2005, I moved down here in Florida, so you're talking about 18 years, my goodness, can't believe it, and when I first came down here, you could get an apartment at a decent complex that had a pool in it, okay, in Largo, Florida. So you're not talking about downtown Tampa by the water. You're not talking about Clearwater Beach next to the Sand Pearl Resort, okay? You're talking about Largo, Florida, but I'm a stone's throw from the beach there. I'm a stone's throw from TFNN headquarters in Clearwater, Florida at the time. And you could get an apartment, a nice one-bedroom apartment, not a studio, a one-bedroom, uh, one-bath apartment, in a complex that had a pool, yet again, for $500. For $500, you could rent an apartment at that time. Those days are long gone, as we know, but it was one of the big things that got me to Florida even then. Because, folks, in the year uh, 2005, you could probably find an apartment for $500 to rent somewhere around the Boston area but I'm not sure it would have been akin to living in Largo, Florida with a complex with a pool 10 minutes from one of the most beautiful beaches in the whole world. And so those things matter. And what I'm saying is those matter. Here we are 18 years later, and they're still mattering. And you're seeing now the workplace shift take place that nobody needs to be in their physical location. Now that's changing too, right? Bosses are trying to bring people back. But there's a lot more mobility in people and their jobs, et cetera, even if you're moving and you can work from home, you know, two days a week, something like that. So maybe you want a better quality of life. You want a bigger house because you're home with your kids, you know, two days during the week and two days on the weekend versus just working a Monday through Friday, nine to five and you hang out with them on the weekend. Uh, and yeah, so you're seeing it play out in Manhattan. And how about the rents, Rand, man? May's median up 154 bucks from April. I mean, that's a huge rise, and you're up almost 10% from a year ago. Now, Manhattan is in its own class, okay, to put it lightly, as in this is not happening everywhere, but it's remarkable what's going on across the board with prices, et cetera. Uh, in May, apartments flew off the market at the fastest pace since last July and August. That's when the most competitive months. Units were listed for just 26 days. Not bad when you think about that's the average, right? Yeah, pretty remarkable, man.
Brooklyn, you're paying up as well, man. 35.50 is what you're paying there for the median, up 92.2%. Northwest Queens, 3,400. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back to finish up the show. Don't go away. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up by 19, we'll call it 20 points, trading at 43.18. And how about the NASDAQ 100, man, up 160 points. Check out the chart that we were looking at earlier, man. Oops, back it up. You talk about parabolic, uh, a little cup and handle, as our man Basil Chapman may say. He's coming up next. 14,666. I mean, we get it all back within two days, man. We're at a critical area now. As in, you get it all back. We're up 2.5% from the lows that we were at just about 36 hours ago, and the market's pushing higher. We got it across the board right now, man. Tesla shares up 5.7%, right? You jump over to Amazon, is up two thirds percent. Apple catches a bid, up 8 tenths percent. Microsoft shares up 1.3%. Google shares up more than a percent right now. NVIDIA up 2.5% right now. Meta flat. What's going on with Meta shares? Uh, but yeah, as you see, man, green across the board. We jump over to the dollar index. Just been chopping around. 103.43 right now on the dollar. No real action on the dollar index. We got the 10-year going lower. We got the 10-year off almost 17 ticks right now. So what do we got? We got a little bit of lower price, higher yield. 
And the market loves the idea that I guess AI is going to take over the world, man. I don't know what it likes. Uh, it likes the fact that the Fed is going to pause, folks. And it's it's anticipating that pause coming up on Wednesday. And all I'll say is there's a lot of optimism built into this market. We're now up, uh, yeah, 18 points at 43.16. And as I mentioned, right, you got to go back to the high of about 43.27. Almost a year ago, 10 months almost, 43.27. And so far, we got a high this morning of 43.19 in the S&P. Russell, actually in the red right now. Look at the Russell, man. Even the Russell, if you think about everything that's been going on with the regional banks, is only about 110 points away from where you were last August, which is not that much when you think about how they got hammered so much on those regional banks versus the S&P versus the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100, you put this on the chart, well above that last August high now, as you were at 13.7, almost 1,000 points above where we were. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your Friday off with me. Stay tuned. we got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Have a great weekend. Have a safe weekend, folks. No drunk driving. We look forward to seeing you back here early Monday morning for Fed Week. But stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman, he's coming up live.